Come one, come all, to the most phenomenal, most extraordinary, most unimaginable puppet show you've ever experienced. Prepare. Welcome to the magical theater of the strange and fantastic. The name's Professor Gregorius T. Oswald. But my... Once upon a time, before everything went to rack and ruin, the Moon Realm was ruled by a beautiful goddess. But then, Little Bear, for whom the Moon Goddess had shown nothing but love, stole two of his mistress's precious possessions. The Black Moonstone and a magic pair of scissors known as Calibrus. After declaring himself Moon Bear King, he invaded the goddess's castle, smashed the white moonstone to pieces. Once upon a time, I once upon a now. This is my moon cheese, so just get to the part where I sound good. <laughs> right. Uh, yes, of course, <laughs> of course. Wasn't everyone so very wowed when the moon goddess was obliterated? Wasn't it just great that the impressive Moon Bear King uh, 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 gave a piece of the White Moonstone to each of his generals, screwing over the moon at large? Oh yes, the next three years were something special. Ah, yes. Now, where do I begin? He was the Moon Realm's ruthless new king, and intended to keep it that way. So night after night he spirited away the souls of children and locked them inside wooden puppets who were doomed to defend Castle Grizzlestaff. And while tonight was no exception, it would prove to be quite exceptional. Poor dearie. Look, Ying Yang, another day, another soul. Poor indeed. You're as bad as the tyrant. How many of these children are you planning to parade off to certain mutilation before you realize you're wasting your time? Why, one more and then another after that? As many as it takes me to get my hands on calibers. <laughs> That's nice. Meet our hapless hero, who's just blinked back to life, firmly in the Moonbear King's clutches. Kutaro, Kutaro, your soul was summoned here at my behest. Kutaro, will you be my friend? Howls to the bitter end. <laughs> yeah! oh. <laughs> Lovely. Another dunce who left his head in the Mule Bear King's belly. Listen, you're going to drop dead if you go without a head. And I'll be the one stuck with cleanup. Come on, let's find something else you can use. A substitute head. What's rattling around in there? It's a head ball. Perhaps I'll just help myself. <laughs> this should do nicely. Hey, you're all set. Remember those head pots. They may be weird, but they flap around with lots of useful heads. But one little touch, and they'll drop their stash. You know, a new kid on the chopping block like you ought to have a couple of noggins at least. Can't take any chances. <sighs> See? Just like I said.
Blast it! What am I doing wrong? Am I not powerful enough? Their magic will fade and no more head. So remember, if you lose your head, pick it up post haste. Oh, and one other thing Mune Sparkles. <laughs> Here, I'll show you. Voila! These are Mune Sparkles. Collect 100 and you'll be able to magically come back to life, even if you do lose all your heads. Let's keep looking. There, the witch's bloomers. Keep your eyes peeled for Mune Sparkles, if you want to stay alive. Oh, that Moonbear King is always angry. Oh, look there. You see that head symbol? Listen, every head has a little bit of magic to it. They react to places and objects that resemble them. Oh, why don't you just give it a try? Here, first choose the right head. Now, use the head's meow jig. Anyway, keep an eye out for those head symbols. Anything could happen. Ah, look at that. No wonder they're so skinny. <laughs> oh, what a little darling! Welcome! Please make yourself at home. Go and bring it to me! You'd better follow that fork. The witch doesn't take kindly to long waits. Watch that feisty fork. It's as wicked as the witch. Hey, I warned you. Remember to pick that up quick. No more heads means no more you. Pass through that shimmering gateway to proceed it to the back of the kitchen. Now, make no mistake. Kutaro was not alone in his plight. The kitchen was already staffed by unfortunates whom the Moonbear King had plucked from their beds. These children had been charged with keeping the Fickle King fed, and it was a miserably hopeless task. After all, his appetite was as vast and insatiable as his lust for power. Careful. There's this thing about fire and puppets. <laughs> All those Mune Sparkles, you don't want to toast yourself grabbing them. Being one of these tykes and spending dusk till dawn getting kneaded and grated, peeled and parboiled, marinated, melted, minced and mashed, or, if they were lucky, just zested, followed by a light grating. Mm, I smell something delicious. The witch couldn't have made it. Oh, wait, 
there's a spark of magic in every head. They got any ideas? Hmm. Head, bread. Oh, try it on that sandwich. Aha, there's that head symbol again. See how using your head can change the world? And I do mean that quite literally. The witch, in case you're wondering, was a singularly screwy sorceress by the name of Esma Potts. You'd think someone that gifted with a cauldron would know a thing or two about cooking, and you'd be wrong. As for Kutaro's catty companion, name of Yin Yang, he used to be the moon goddess's faithful feline. One might say his current mistress was a step down in some regard. Watch out for the vegetables. In this kitchen, the cook is a cook, and the squash are out to squish. Reflexes or... Until you march those wooden legs up to the Moon Bear King's throne room and fetch me his magic scissors, you can do it. After all, you are a very special boy. Deja Mew. <laughs> How many very special boys are we up to now? Yeah, yeah. You can keep him company. Whoop de doo. We get to go to the floor. <laughs> Welcome to the Tower of Tribulations. But don't let a cheerful name like that fool you. This place is dripping with nasty. See? You never know where a head might be hiding. Head pots, dreadnoughts, parking lots. Check everywhere. They don't say get your head out of the gutter for nothing. <laughs>
Kutaro had been snatched away by an enormous arachnid. But why didn't he end up as dinner? Perhaps the spider mistook Kutaro for one of her 10,000 children. Hard to keep track of all those little darlings, even with eight eyes. Magnificent Kutaro. There's the entrance to the throne room. No one has ever made it this far. The sun does have a burning temper. Ha! What did he do? I've got his precious daughter! Uh, well, of course you do, sire. And even if you didn't, your majesticalness is more than enough to eclipse the sun. I've prepared a very special room for you, my dear princess. So please, I insist. Take a long rest. Meow, what luck. 
He's left Calibras unattended for once. Kutaro, you are one lucky person. <laughs> There before our hero towered the most impressive pair of scissors you've ever seen. The legendary Calibrus. But Calibrus was bound fast by vile vines, the twisted offspring of the Moon Bear King's twisted magic. Kutaro, meet Calibrus. Calibrus is a cut above your average scissors. He used to serve the Moon Goddess. Step forward, boy. And take your destiny now. Now that's a shock. <coughs> I mean, an honor. <laughs> Don't you see? Calibrus has chosen you. And so Kutaro's fortunes were starting to look up. After all, he was now the proud owner of a pair of enchanted scissors. Still, it wasn't all good luck. Remember, Calibrus belonged to the Moon Bear King. And the boy's first challenge was to extricate himself from the booby trap he'd just set off. Rats! Now this is a fine way. There! That's the ticket! Nicely done, Kutaro! We'll be out of here in no time. Yes, you know what to do. Oh, scissored like a true wizard. See, take good care of Calibras, and Calibras will take care of you. Oh, lovely. Very nice. Ah! Who dares lay a hand on my property? My traps! How did you get out? Wait, how did you get in? You wretch! What have you done to suit my throne room? Guards! Apprehend that thief! Deftly and darkly, the grubs descended upon our trembling hero. But locked within each of them was the soul of a child, just as scared as him. You see that? It's... that's it! Very heroic. I'll pop your head! Clean off your shoulders! Get caught, and you'll be grabbified, no! just like the rest I of these poor that children. I want scoundrel's head! Guards? Huh? Guards! <gasps> I'll do it myself. Of all the Moonbear King's nightmarish magical creations, Weavers were some of the nastiest. This was Kutaro's first ever real dose of fear. But to escape the Weaver, those fears would need to be conquered. As the clash grew even clashier, the boy snipped, sliced, and sundered with the cold realization his life counted on it.
The weaver is full of souls, like the one you saw before, but cut those souls free, and you can flatten this carpet for good. Success! The fellow weaver was no more. With the legendary Calibrus firmly in hand, Kuturo had taken the first step of his grand adventure. Unfortunately, the next steps had to be taken at a run, as the Savage King was hot on our heroes. Tiger! Yes, sir. Where did that wealth go? Well, he can't have gotten far, sire. He has such tiny legs. I imagine he's right around the corner. I don't want him around the corner. I want him corner! <laughs> find that thief, or I'll find someone who can! <laughs> Please, sire, your blood pressure. I'll take care of it. Would you like a back rub? A glass of warm milk? Anything? No? Bravo, Kutaro. None of the others ever made it half as far. This will be music to the witch's ears. Oh, man up, would you please? Would you prefer the grubs find you and the Mule Bear King yanks your limbs off? <laughs> Flash of Calibrus, Kutaro felled the frightful monster and freed the soul of every last child in the fiend's clutches. Well done, Kutaro. The souls he freed were homeward bound. Kutaro had obtained Calibrus, a legendary pair of magic scissors. But before he could start cutting along the dotted line of destiny, he would have to escape the wrath of the tyrannical Moon Bear King.